Morning, Karen. Hi, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning, Ann. Hi, Joy Sue. Hi, Judy. Good to see you. Hi, Dee. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. You ladies sure look pretty this morning. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. There's my friend Debbie Nolan. Good morning, Linda Gardner, all the way from Louisiana. And then there's uh, Donna. Good to see you guys. We're reading January the 25th of 2021. It's good to be back. <clears throat> like Debbie says, um, it's good to be a COVID survivor. We survived COVID. Took a couple of days to rest last week and Debbie helped me out. Actually three days all together last week. Sure is nice to have some help. Appreciate it, Miss Debbie. You do a great job with the Bible study. Good morning, Montana. So we're on the mend around here and things are going good and the Bible reading is good. Reading about the death of Jacob and the death of, then eventually the death of Joseph today in Genesis. We're reading Genesis chapter 50 through Exodus chapter two. So we get to start reading about the birth of Moses today as well. I see that. In the column, uh, it was a year ago this weekend, we did our very first Dream Big Retreat in the Dewey, Oklahoma area. We have a church up there that um, supports us, and we go up there, and our uh, Dream Big Retreat for the Dewey girls this year is February the 26th through the 28th. Dewey is just a little bit north of Bartlesville. We go to the, the Bar Dew Valley Inn. It's a beautiful bed and breakfast uh, place where we all get together and just take one weekend a month, one weekend a month, and turn off our phones and turn off all electronics and just spend that time with God. Just one weekend a month. It's a powerful, powerful weekend. So anyway, we'll get into the reading um, we're, we're reading where, uh, again, Joseph's father, Jacob, is um, spending his last moments on earth. And then as soon as he passed away, Joseph got permission to take his bones back to his homeland. But uh, today's reading contains one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible, Genesis 50, 20. So... We, we've read the story, so you guys are up with us on the story of Joseph and what his brothers had done to him and then how he had been sold into slavery and spent 11 years in slavery and two years in prison. <clears throat> and then he was elevated up into the second in command under Pharaoh. And it was because he interpreted the dream that called for seven years of feast and seven years of famine and... Uh, Pharaoh put him in charge of all of the food, and Joseph, through the wisdom that God gave him, was able to uh, keep enough food, not just for his own people or Pharaoh's people, I should say, um, but for people in surrounding countries as well came over, because that's how uh, Jacob's sons, other sons, Joseph's brothers, came to uh, be in front of Joseph. And so Joseph ended up moving the whole family over. And that's how the Israelites got started in Egypt. And so once Jacob passed away, then his brothers become fearful that now that his, their dad was gone, that now Joseph would take revenge on them for what he did to them. And um, Matthew, Matthew, uh, Genesis 50, verse 20 is where he tells them, but oh, so let's start in 19. But Joseph, Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God um, that I can punish you? 
And then verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought, he brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many. Another translation says what the enemy meant for evil, God turned for good so many will be saved. And that scripture came to me at such a time in my life that I'll never forget that scripture. We had lost my, my niece to a tragic uh, to a tragedy. Uh, she was 17 years old and um, God had given me the scripture of what the enemy means for evil. God will turn for good so many will be saved. And um, Anyway, it's just one of those moments in the Bible I always look for as I'm reading through these stories. But in the context here, uh, Joseph isn't even holding his brothers accountable for the bad deeds that they'd done against him because he saw God's hand in it. And if I was to say that there's one thing that through these last three weeks of um, battling this stupid C virus that I don't even like to give a name to, <laughs> nothing's changed, by the way, about the way I think about that. <laughs> um, it's, I think that God has really used this time to refocus me once again and to remind me how we wake up in the morning, we go to bed at night. We wake up in the morning, we go to bed at night. Joseph's brothers, you know, entered into this new land because of a famine. They were going to starve to death. They didn't want to go back. They didn't, they didn't want to go to the first time. And once they were there and Joseph treated them the way he treated them, in the very beginning and sent them home and told them to bring back their little brother. They, they didn't want to go back. They didn't want to go back to this strange land with these strange people and the strange ways they did things, but they knew that they would starve to death. And so then they get back and they get, they get settled into a routine. I, I think it was in yesterday's reading, it told how long uh, Jacob survived while he was still there, but it was 17 years, maybe maybe I'm correct in that. But he lived quite a, a period of time in this new land. And, you know, we we set into our new routines. We, we get a new job or life changes. We have a new baby. We get married. We go to college, whatever. We Something new happens, like what happened to Joseph and his family, and then you settle into a routine and you, you go to bed at night and you say your prayers and you wake up in the morning, spend some time with the Lord and you set about your day. And it's almost like we get tunnel vision. It's almost like we settle into our own paradigm. A paradigm is the way our brain is mapped based on the things that have happened to us. So my way of seeing things is not necessarily the same as Tanya's, and my way of seeing things is not the way Tom sees them. But I, nevertheless, I start getting into this mindset that's based on experiences that I've had, the way my brain is mapped, and a routine sets in, and, and before you even realize what's going on, you almost wake up to expect the same thing over and over and over again. Um, but that that isn't necessarily the way God sees things. In fact, I, I'm convinced it's not the way God sees things. I, I don't believe there's any of us that right now today are living absolutely God's best for our life. I think there's been areas where old mindsets uh, set in and we have limiting beliefs, we have self-talk that limits us, that we just can't quite see what God has for us. So in these last three weeks, if, if I look back over my time with the Lord in my quiet time, um, and I've had some intense moments, and I've had days that went by that I wasn't real sure that I just really communed with God the way I like to commune with God, it's been a, it's a mixed bag, but overall, <clears throat> even as I read today's scriptures, there's a theme for me, and that is, that is for me to press in and to allow God to show me the way he sees things. See, Joseph could have set into his old mindset of, I've been thrown into this cistern, 
because they knew that I couldn't get out and I, I'm set here. My brothers threw me into this cistern to die, to die. They, they, they committed murder by throwing me into this cistern. They hated me so much <clears throat> that they sold me into slavery. <clears throat> they despised my dreams to the point that they would actually physically want to harm me. And now I'm 11 years in prison, all because of what my brothers did to me. Um, now I've, I've been, um, all these bad things have happened to me. You, you understand what I'm saying is that he had the ability to have this mindset set in based on what had been done to him to where when he woke up in the morning, he just expected the same thing. But that's not what we see in the life of Joseph. It's one of the reasons it's such a powerful story in the Bible because Joseph was able to see things the way God wanted him to see him. See, it's so easy for us to talk about a dream that Pharaoh had and how Joseph interpreted that dream. But Joseph's own words, if you look back, was that I don't interpret these dreams God's the only one that can interpret these dreams. But see, Joseph had the ability to see things the way God sees them. God, Joseph could see that out of that dream that was about physical things, about the cows and the wheat um, being a famine, that rep what represented a famine and what represented the feast times, the, the times that it was going to be good, the good the seven years of good harvest and the seven years of, of famine. And Joseph rose above that and could see even beyond that, which is exactly why Potiphar put him second in command of everything because he had that vision from God. He had, and, and not a vision, I'm not talking about a vision, I'm talking about the vision of God. And so here we are, his brothers are crying before him, saying, our, our father even. He, they even used his name to come to Joseph and say, I'm so sorry. Our father told us to, to ask you to forgive us for what we did to you. And, and, and Joseph resp responds back, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended harm for me, but God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. He saw ab above and beyond the current circumstances into the future of what God had for them. And, and I know that God's been showing me. Even through my guiding scriptures he gave me on December the 12th about God opens the doors he wants open. He shuts what he wants shut. Nobody can mess with God's plan. Well, nobody can mess with God's plan but me. He still gives me free will. He still gives me, um, I can make choices other than God's best for me. I, I can. I can choose things that are not God's best for me. And, and, uh, <laughs> uh oh, I, I, I get so excited I have trouble with my words of even explaining what it is I think that God's shown me through all of this. But um, if let's just say you you were seeking God for 2021. Lord, what, what do you have for me for 2021? One of the first things that I can tell you based on reading this book over and over and over again, even when you've been given a word, even when you've been given scriptures to back up your word for 2021, even when you think you know what this next step in life is going to be, we limit God. We limit him so much. <clears throat> okay, so let's just say this is the year. You graduated from college. You got your first job offer. You think it's the job of your dreams. You pray about it. You've got a word from God about accepting that job. And then you've got scriptures to back it up. And you think, okay, I'm ready. I'm set. We don't see things the way God sees things for us. Because the next thing you know, we, we, we're leading up to that very first day. And what happens? Our palms get sweaty. 
we get a little bit nervous. We rehearse over and over again what we're going to say to the boss on the first day. And we think, oh, what if we don't, what if I don't do well in this job? What if I can't do what they think? What if the what ifs, that self-doubt, that self-talk, those self-limiting beliefs come into play, even when we know that we know that we know that we are doing exactly what God wants us to do. How quickly those doubts come in. How quickly. I mean, Joseph at this point, they've spent a long period of time that Joseph has treated his family like royalty. And one little act, which was Jacob's home going, took place and they immediately went into fear. That's how we are. I mean, that's how how quickly fear is just on your little shoulder right here, that little stink bug's right there, just ready. Oh, okay, so you had a good interview. Oh, great. Oh, wow, you got the call that you got the job. That doesn't mean you'll be able to keep that job. It doesn't mean you're even going to like this job. It, those little doubts come in, and, and, and God, is, God is trying to clear out that mess for me and say, no, Elizabeth, rise above, uh, spiritually, rise above what the circumstances are. Get up out of the rut of thinking you know, and let me let you see what I see. Because see, when God puts a dream in your heart, when he told Joseph that there was going to be a famine, a, a feast followed by a famine, Joseph had vision enough to see beyond that, that he even knew what systems to put in place, how to collect the grains, how to collect from the people, how to build up from the harvest of the feast that was taking place, the abundance of the seven years prior, and he knew how to lay it out into the seven years of famine. We, we just go from one event to another to another. I mean, it's just like we're on one wave and we ride we ride that wave and then we fall and we crash and we burn. We ride that wave and we crash and, and we burn instead of understanding that God will give us vision for whatever it is he's called us to. And, and, and then we just trust his word. See, all the way through here, you've heard me do it day after day after day that Okay, Lord, today, January the 25th, what is it that you have for me today? I love the stories. I do. I love the history. More years I've read this as historical text than I've been able to read it from a spiritual perspective to have it feed my spirit man on a daily basis. I love that I'm to that place now that I'm looking for spiritual food for my soul, for my spirit on a daily basis. And today... I see that what the enemy intends to harm us with, God will use it for our good. But God will surely come to help you and lead you out of this land of Egypt, verse 24. I see where the prophecy was fulfilled in uh, chapter um, uh, Exodus chapter 1, verse 7, but their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that they become extremely powerful and filled the land. See, that's a prophecy fulfilled to Jacob. That's a prophecy fulfilled to his uh, father, Isaac. That's a prophecy fulfilled to his father, Abraham. That the, that the Israelites would be more than the grains of sand that they could count more than the stars in the sky. And we see, I see a prophecy fulfilled in today's reading. <clears throat> and then there was one other one, if I can find it. Well, let's, I'll just move into the Exodus. Let's, we're, we're past chapter one now. And because the Israelites become so plentiful, um, now there's a new king, a king of Egypt who doesn't know anything about Joseph and all that he did for him. All he knows is all these Israelites are, are multiplying like rabbits and they're overtaking his country and they're going to overpower him. And so he declares that every newborn boy was to be thrown into the Nile River and drowned. If you can imagine. If you can imagine. But see, then, then um, these midwives... 
could see beyond that edict, that, that law that was thrown in, in there, and they found a way. All the way through this, God is showing me how when we see things the way God sees. See, God didn't see the, the, the law that said all male babies had to be killed. God saw Moses being born and being sent to save his people. If we can see the way God sees, then all doubt would leave us. All fear would leave us. It's just, just good stuff. Just good stuff. I just thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, then we start Matthew chapter 16. I love Matthew chapter 16. Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And Simon Peter in verse 16 answers, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus replied to him, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. See that You see the theme? Because... My Father who is in heaven has revealed this to me. He's teaching me. And through these three weeks, he's showing me more and more that he, that he gives us vision for what he calls us to. I guess I just summed it all up right there. I've got a couple, two or three different opportunities in front of me for 2021. On one hand, if I look, if I look here, my whole business has been shut down now for about six weeks. I, I could look at that and I could look at lack. I could look at the what ifs there. But on the other hand, I've got, uh, I've got one opportunity being presented that makes no earthly sense whatsoever. That is a magnificent opportunity. Well, then I've got another opportunity that makes no earthly sense that is a magnificent opportunity. And I have choices to make. I have, I, today I wake up and I've got a choice. What is it I want to see today? And I can just tell you the only thing I want to see is what does God see for Elizabeth? What does God see for my family? What does God see for my business, for my children, for my grandchildren? What, what does God see? And when we see the way he sees it's, it's, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. It's like, wow. I mean, we would be walking around all the time just saying, wow, if we could just see the way he sees things. Hmm. I mean, we have no clue what Jesus Christ really changed on heaven for us. In, in heaven on earth for us. We have no clue what truly changed right here on this earth by the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made, by the only son that God had being sacrificed for us. We, we don't have a clue. We don't have to have the struggles that Joseph had in his life. We don't have to have the struggles that Moses went through in his life. Doesn't mean we're not going to struggle. We're going to struggle. But see, we have living in us, in us, the power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the power that lives in us to live an overcoming life when that struggle comes, when suffering hits. I, I've, had, I've had a grace in me while I battled this COVID virus, that I never reached a point of despair. I never reached a point of fear. I never reached a point that I didn't know that I know that I know that God was with me and was guiding me every step of the way. That's living an overcoming life. I've been just as happy and content and peaceful in these last several weeks that I was in the weeks leading up to it, as I will be over the next several weeks, that's what Jesus Christ came and did for us. We just have to, we just have to continue to read. See, he's teaching me how to tap into that. He's teaching me how to see things differently. 
instead of living from this physical perspective all the time. I, I can read these physical texts and I can read the historical context that is very, very real. And there's power in that. I can spend hours and hours researching, but I'd much rather spend hours with my eyes shut saying, Lord, what do you mean by that? Lord, what does it mean? What does it mean that what the enemy intends for evil, God will turn for good? You mean in that horrible, horrible situation I found myself in when our country went to war, in that horrible, horrible situation when all hell broke loose, I can see good come from it? Yes, yes. We've got promises to stand on today. Promises that, that my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. Just like Jesus told Peter. The reason you know this, Peter, is because my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. What is he revealing to you today? Well, stop being so <clears throat> caught up in the, oh, I got to make this work. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to. Well, if I'll just make the right decision, if I'll just take the right action, if I'll just use the right formula, if I'll just pray the right prayer, if I'll just, if I, and, and just release it all. Just say, Father, I just take all my cares today. In fact, let's just pray that today together. Father, I just ask you, Lord, that every care that weights us down, those people that can hear my voice, that are feeling weighted down by, by the cares of this world, that we just, we just reach inside, Father, and we just release that. We just open the floodgates of our hearts right now, Father, and I just open it up and I release all those cares to you, Lord. I just give them to you, Father God. Father God, I don't know today how to do that and how to do that and how to do that, but you do. You see us on the other side of that, Father, and I'm so grateful. Help me to see on the other side of the struggle, Lord. Thank you for the good plan that you have for us. Thank you for the reminder in today's word that even what the enemy attempts for destruction, you'll turn for good. And I thank you for, for that, Father. I thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can trust you. I thank you that you're still God. I thank you that your ways are good. I thank you that you are love and that it's love that you put into our life, Father, and that all of our power that we have comes from your love and our ability to love others. Thank you, Lord. It's in Christ I pray. I'll end it with just the first couple of sentences in Proverbs, Proverbs 5, verse 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you've learned. That's my wish for you today on this magnificent Monday. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.